These are the four things the Boston Celtics do defensively that set them apart from the rest of the NBA. Firstly, they get back in transition, not conceding much at the basket. This is where the Celtics role players shine. Like Luke Cornett, who's mobile and can move his feet to protect the basket and comes up with some nice blocks. Sam Hauser uses his hands smartly and pokes the ball out without fouling and he gets some blocks at the rim. He does this while most players would needlessly foul or make a fake attempt at stopping the ball only to give up an uncontested layup. And y'all will see some of this a little later on in the video. But transition defense wouldn't be complete without talking about Derek White. All right, all right, all right. He's not a role player per se. He could have been an all-star this past year, but that story has already been told. But if you want me to tell it, let me know in the comments down below. However, he does an amazing job of keeping his body in front of the offensive player, attacking the basket. And also, he will meet someone at the rim and... <clears throat> come away with a block. I'm gonna say this a lot in this video, but it's a fine line these guys navigate because they know when to swarm the ball in the paint and use their hands, but also when to fan out and protect the three-point line. So they'll let their teammates handle the ball handler one-on-one. -on -one. However, it's important to contrast a team like Boston, which has its eyes set on championship or bust like the Washington Wizards. Let's take a look at how the Wizards defend the rim in transition. You start to play right here. Look at this. There are four Houston Rockets players all in one line right here. The Wizards players are basically out of frame. They should be back. They should have this all covered. Definitely not. should not be giving up a layup. And they go. They take off. All right. He declares ball. He's watching the ball. And then the weak side is nowhere to be found. And he just lets him score. From what I see, there is no wall being built between the ball handler and the basket. Players gamble for steals and give no heads up to their teammates that they're about to go, you know, break protocol and try to get a steal here. There's no communication, which leads to two players guarding one person, even in a slow, fast break situation. And don't get me started. Please don't get me started on all those uncontested layups and dunks. They could benefit from a big man like Cornette who can move and protect the basket because they're big men. I don't really see them doing that much to help out. But again, I'm I'm not here to rag on the Wizards. The only things that they're hoping for are a high pick in the upcoming draft and for Virginia to let them build a new arena in Arlington. I just wanted to highlight the small things that makes Boston special on defense, especially in transition defense. Hey, if there's anyone that you know that wants to level up their game, book a coaching call with me. Hit my stand store. Link is in the description below. Now let's get back to the content. All right, at number three, we have the fun fact that they're so damn good at guarding the posts. But first, when analyzing a post defender, I prioritize five things. And once you all see these things that I'm pointing out, you'll begin to notice them as well when you watch more NBA games. Firstly, I assess how effectively the defender forces the offensive player to catch the ball outside the paint. Secondly, I evaluate whether the defender's top foot is positioned above the offensive player's foot, aiming to deter middle penetration. Next, I observe the defender's hand usage. Are they actively trying to disrupt the ball, trying to poke it? You always have to maintain active hands. Following this, I consider the number of dribbles the offensive player needs to attempt to get a shot off. Lastly, you always have to contest the shot. My college coach always used to tell me it's JT3. Contesting ensures that the defender's extended hand and body creates a barrier between the offensive player and the rim. While not every box may be checked, the Celtics consistently come close to fulfilling my defensive standards for guarding the post. Pascal doesn't really like attempt to get too close to the paint. He just wants to catch the ball, so he catches it. He's a little off the block. Top foot is kind of up, can't really see it. One dribble, two dribbles. That's a couple bounces. Three, four, trying to hook him, five. And then pump fake, he stays down on the pump fake. Don't go for pump fakes, y'all. Don't go for pump fakes. Now that you're familiar with my criteria, let's delve into the defensive performances of the star players, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and Derek White. All right, maybe not Mr. White. We all know what he can do on the defensive end. So I'll primarily focus on Jason and Jalen, who are the highest paid players on the team, and they possess the ultimate green light on offense. But from what I see, Jason checks at least four out of the five boxes, which makes him a, a good defender in my eyes. When he gets switched on to a scoring big man, he takes the challenge of preventing them from getting to the basket, sometimes forcing them to take as many as four to five dribbles before they get a shot off. Will he get a stop every time? Nah, not really. Will he give you a contest every time? 
not all the time. But will he do his best to force you to catch it outside the paint? Yeah. But will he take those bumps in the chest to keep his man between the basket and him? Yeah, for sure. Right there, I really think it's pride right there. You know, he is a Mamba type player. He wants to be like Kobe. I think he's a, a future MVP. What more can you ask for, you know, a player like that? And you heard me right. I think he's a future MVP. Let me know in the comment section down below if you want me to break down Jason Tatum's game alone. Jalen Brown is a different animal. I feel as though he's quick to close the space and not let you catch it where you want to catch it. From there, he uses his hands right away to swipe on every bounce. You can't have any lazy dribbles around him. If he sees an opening, he's going for it. Not only does he raise his top foot right away, but he also angles a player towards the help on some of those dribbles. And that's hard to do. But he does a lot of the same things that his teammates do, taking the bumps on the chest. He's a smart defender. If he finds himself on a lefty like Julius Randle, he knows to angle him towards the baseline to take away the use of his right shoulder in that left hand. He uses his strength to be a pest on the block. We could tell he's in the weight room all the time because he's not letting anything in there easy. But again, they have a good connection. I'm going to say this over and over and over throughout this video between them. And they know when to allow guys to be left on an island and trust that they've got it without overhelping, fine line here, but they also know when to sniff it out and come from the weak side to help. Next up at number two is that they are really good at defending the ISO on the perimeter. Nowadays, much of basketball is one-on-one -on -one, and former players feel the same way as much of the fans do. It's not good basketball. The NBA, like you said, the game just changed so much, it's hard to watch. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, it's yes. hard to watch because nobody's playing defense, there's a lot of shots and it's just like, for me, it's like going to play pickup. Like, it's like, we go play pickup and it's something like, you get a bucket, get a bucket. Go one-on-one, -on -one, go one-on-one. -on -one. So that's just all it really is. But what separates the Celtics from everyone else on the defensive end is they know when to strap up and welcome the challenge. They're shooting for championship here and defense is a must. If a big guy gets switched on to a guard, the team has no problem letting them handle it. And they'll sit back and just wait. Legs bent, ready to help out. Xavier Tillman moves his feet just well enough not to get blown by and gives just a good enough contest that it could maybe, you know, alter the shot and may maybe the reason why you don't get that to fall. The same goes for Cornette and old man Al Horford. Come on, he was drafted in 07 and he's still going strong. How many of those guys are even left in the league today? Back to it, Drew Holiday is getting in the mix, using his hands to try to get deflections and keeping himself between himself and the basket. Sam Hauser impresses me with the way he shows his hands on drives and contests. He stays in front of his man, showing his hands to the ref, so if there's any sort of flopping going on, it's probably gonna go on call. But defense is taken seriously on this team. Even in a blowout, people, the bench, they're doing the same things that the starters like Derek White, Tatum, and Brown were doing in the first half. Tip my hat to y'all, for sure. Because getting it in garbage time and making plays you know, sometimes you just want to get out of there sometimes. So, I was going to do another contrast between you know, the Celtics and another bad team. The team I was thinking about doing was the, the Detroit Pistons. I wanted to see what was going on during that 28 consecutive losses. Boy, <laughs> that was bad. All right, let's keep it straight, Celtics. Let's take a look at the unicorn, Christoph Porzingis. We all know he can score, and he's having a great year offensively. But is he bringing it on the defensive end? Dun, dun, dun. He uses his length really well to create space and to contain the ball handler. Guys are looking for any crack in your armor to exploit to get by you. He can contest the shot or even block the shot, but he covers so much ground. He gets a block on arguably the best big man in the game today, Joker. And you see how far back he shoots the ball from? He doesn't get blown by much. He gives you what he can while guarding on the perimeter but don't expect him to to get a ton of steals or deflections but all in all he is a key part of the celtics great defense this year all right let's break down christoph porzingo's iso defense real quick so bonuses catches it nothing is there he's gonna go one-on-one -on -one. porzingis looks like lean and skinny but boom he takes the bump doesn't give up much ground i like it and that's a good pedigree of big man right there from sabonis Good defense right there, KP. Next up on the list, besides ISO, is how well the team guards a pick and roll because that is one of the most used plays in the NBA. Teams aren't running flex cuts at the end of the shot clock. You know, point guards are, are calling for a ball screen. Before I get into this, I want to break it down in two ways. How the Celtics handle the ball handler and how they handle the roller slash popper. When it comes to the ball handler, it's a toss up. Today's players are incredibly skilled. And once they come off that screen, you're at their mercy. Just this year, Tyrese Maxey scored 
51 points. Devin Booker went crazy and dropped 62 on my Indiana Pacers. And later that same night, Luka Doncic dropped 73 points. Yes, you heard me right, 73 points on the Atlanta Hawks. Everything needs to be perfect on certain days to get a stop or shut down the star player these days. You have to be into the ball early. The big man guarding the ball screen needs to be in a low stance, ready to guard, and the weak side hopefully doesn't need to come into play, but they should be aware and in their stances, ready to go. I wanna hear them chirping back there as I go up there to guard that ball screen. I wanna know that I got help no matter what, even if I don't need it. And sometimes that doesn't even happen. But the Celtics have a strong foundation and can always rely on pressuring the ball handler early, showing hands on switches after the ball handler picks up their dribble while attacking the basket, and always, always contesting the shot, no matter what. Any ball players that play rec league or kids coming up, do what Derek White does and give a rare view contest. These things that the Celtics are doing give them a chance to slow someone down and attempt to get a stop. Last but not least, when it comes to the passes to the role man, the Celtics are giving up very little at the basket. All the same principles apply here. Essentially, leave it up to the two in the ball screen to handle it. But I'm not surprised that the big men are getting it done. Al Horford is still comfortable moving his feet, allowing everyone else to stay home on their man. And I'd also be remiss if I didn't show love to Drew Holiday. This man doesn't die on ball screens and gets back to his man as quickly as possible. Allowing the big man to release to get his man who could be popping to the three-point line for a shot or they could take it off the dribble and get to the basket. You don't know how many teammates I had that left me hanging out to dry on the perimeter because they were sauntering back to their own man. But this is not about me, it's about the Celtics. There you have it folks, those are the four things I see as to why the Boston Celtics are the best defensive team in the NBA. And for all you Celtics fans who made it to the end of this video, here's some offense for you. Thanks for listening to me talk about defense the whole time. You deserve this. The next video I'm working on is about Anthony Edwards. I think he's special. He gives me slight MJ vibes. But uh, we have some more videos up for you here. Please like, share, and subscribe. It helps me out. And remember, no layups. Hard fouls only.